read the Christmas story uh, together. So we're going to jump around. We'll start with Old Testament Bible verses that were predicting Jesus' birth, and then we'll come to the actual story. And we have 11 people here from the gathering who are going to read it for us. Uh, you guys can uh, stand wherever you'd like. Um, when it's your turn, you can come to the front here. Uh, yeah, so it goes Ricky, Runa, Brian, Margo, Stephen, Steve, Abby, Rebecca, Mackenzie, Eric, and Hi'ilani. So first, we will hear from Ricky. How's it, everybody? Praise Jesus. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. All right. I was looking at 12 here, but you know, I got to read uh, five or two. Okay. But thou Beth uh, Bethlehem. I can't read that word. Uh, yeah. Uh, F, F, whatever. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth until me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose, go whose goings forth have been from of the old, from everlasting. I'm King James Version today, so bear with me. Bear. Isaiah 714. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. I'll read this one. Brian is not here. <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Isaiah 49. Ascend a high mountain, you herald of good tidings. O Zion, with a clear, strong voice make known to everyone the joy that belongs to God's chosen place. O Jerusalem, you herald of good tidings, make the news ring out. Don't be afraid. For, say to these cities, this Judah, behold your God. And I'll read the next one too. It's Matthew 1, 18 through 25. It says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus.
I guess this is Luke 2. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Continuing on in Luke 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Okay. Okay. Continuing with Luke 2.15. When the angels had left, him, left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they turned off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I'm gonna read Matthew 2, one through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod about the time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for, private, for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Continuing with Matthew 2, 13 through 20. He escaped to Egypt. When they got gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem. 
in its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared and dreamed to, to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. I'm reading John 3, 3:16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God sent not his Son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. My favorite chapter. Amen. Let's praise Jesus, celebrate his birth coming back. He's coming back again. Amen. So as we celebrate tonight, know that Jesus did not come to earth just to hang out. He came for a purpose. Um, that is for God to use him to save the world. Uh, the prophecies of the Old Testament that we just read predicted the Savior would be born in Bethlehem, would be born from a virgin, and would be a boy. And these prophecies were predicted hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. And there were 300 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled perfectly. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And our friend Steve, guitarist, sitting back there, he was up here reading. Steve is a published author. He wrote this book called What Your Atheist Professor Doesn't Know But Should. It's on Amazon. You can check it out, What Your Atheist Professor Doesn't Know But Should. But he explains in his book what the odds are of someone like Jesus, fulfilling all of these prophecies perfectly. We can know for a fact that Jesus is the Messiah. And in Steve's book, he says the odds of one person fulfilling just eight of the Old Testament prophecies is one to 10 to the 17th power. So that's one with 17 zero. So if you're playing that game, like what are the odds? That's not very good odds. And that's to fulfill only eight of the prophecies. And to visualize that in Steve's book, he says, imagine like the state of Texas, like where Lane's from. Go Longhorns, yeah? So imagine you have silver dollar coins and you fill up the state of Texas completely laid over with these silver dollar coins. And imagine that's two feet deep in these silver dollar coins. And then you mark one of those coins and mix them all up and then try to find that one coin again. That's the odds of one person fulfilling eight of these prophecies that Jesus did. That's just eight. And if you continue in Steve's book, um, if someone was to fulfill 48 of these prophecies, the odds of that are 1 to 10 in the 157th power. That's one with 157 zeros. That is double the amount of atoms there are in the known universe. That's only for 48. Jesus fulfilled 300 prophecies perfectly. Jesus is the Messiah. We can trust that Jesus is our Savior. He is the one we've been waiting for, and he came here with a purpose. The prophecy in Isaiah 7:14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. And then in the New Testament, hundreds of years later, it says this, the prophecy was fulfilled. In Matthew 1, and 23, it says, All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Like, o come, O come, Emmanuel. God is with us right now. He came. He went back up. He has left us his Holy Spirit. If Jesus is your Savior tonight. According to a 2017 Barna research poll, 92% of Americans believe Jesus was real and lived and walked on earth. So 92% of Americans believe Jesus is real. 87% of Americans believe in God. But only 56% of Americans believe Jesus is God. 
So only 56% of those people believe in O come, O come, Emmanuel, God is with us. Like, where are you today? What do you believe? Do you believe in God like most of America? Or do you believe Jesus is God like about half of America? And have you made that personal? Have you accepted this Jesus God into your life as your savior? You're going to have opportunity to do that tonight. And maybe you come to the gathering because you like the positive vibes, you know, we're so chill, or the nice people, your friends, you like the music, you like the beach, and those are all good things. Those are all good reasons to come here. But tonight, I want to let you know specifically that there is more to church than those things. It's about Jesus. And your opinion about Jesus matters. Who is Jesus to you? It affects you forever. Um, you may believe he came to earth, you may believe he's God. Why does it matter? Um, because Jesus came for a purpose and he wants to change your life. And there's three reasons tonight why Jesus came. The first reason Jesus came to earth is because we are sinners. Um, we had a gathering vision day. We do it twice a year where we uh, kind of unite together. We dream, we share ideas for the future of our church. And we had one last Wednesday and we, it was great. We heard of lots of ideas and we're going to implement a lot of them these next six months. But one topic that we talked about was offering. And I announced the offering up front here on Sundays, but I have forgotten to announce the offering like the last four Sundays. And I'm surprised that our giving has been so high when we don't even talk about it, yeah? Like, praise God, like you guys get it. You guys are worshiping through your giving. But I'm, I'm pretty good in general of like remembering to announce the offering. I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty good, I'd say. And maybe that's how you feel about yourself in general. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm not perfect, but I'm a good person. But today you need to know that being a good person is not good enough because God's standard is perfection. James 2.10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. Like disobeying or dishonoring God in one way throughout your life. Maybe you like stretched the truth, you told a little white lie, you cheated on your taxes, your homework, your spouse, you uh, stole some rubber bands from work, you stole some food from your roommate, like all these things, like minor things, yeah. But um, like your parents, your siblings, your roommates, your spouse, they love you so much. But I'm sure if, you, if we asked them, they could say right away like your failures and shortcomings too, yeah? Like all of us are, very sinful. We are not perfect. We may be like pretty good in general, but we are not perfect. And it's hard to own up to our mistakes when we've messed up. It like hurts our pride and we have to admit that we are not good enough. Like when your coach or your boss like lectures you or when you're late to work or to practice, it's hard to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Um, and it's been like this since the beginning. Like in Genesis, Adam and Eve, you guys know the story, I'm going to say it again. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve sinned against God, and they did not own up to their mistakes. And in Genesis 3, 8 through 13, it says this. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden, so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you what it is to be naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. So Adam and Eve hid from God. Adam blamed Eve, then Adam blamed God for giving him Eve, then Eve blamed the serpent. Like, it's so easy to pass the blame and, like, not own up to our mistakes. This happened since the first humans of, of history. And through Adam and Eve's sin, all of us have sinned, and we are born into sin, and we continue sinning after that. We sin because we're sinners, and we're sinners because we sin. No matter whose fault you believe it is, we need to own up to our mistakes, admit that we are not good enough, admit that we are not perfect. We do not meet God's standard of perfection, never sinning one time. And because of this, everyone on earth deserves hell. And I don't know 
if you know what hell is, heaven and hell are real, and hell is a burning lake of fire. And if you go there, you're drowning forever, separated from God, separated from all your friends. You have no hope, and this no hope lasts forever. Everyone deserves this. But Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God had a plan. That's our second point here. The second reason Jesus came is to save sinners. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve just finished with all their excuses. And then coming up in the very next verse, God introduces the first prophecy about Jesus coming at Christmas time. And it says in Genesis 3, 14 and 15, it says, Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all the livestock and more than any animal of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will make enemies of you and the woman, and of your offspring and her descendant. He shall bruise you on the, heel, on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. So literally the very moment sin entered the world, God introduced the gospel, the good news about Jesus coming. In verse 15, it says, her descendant. It's also translated as her seed or her offspring. And that is referring to Jesus, the seed of the woman, the only person born, not of the seed of a man. And the descendant, Jesus, came to bruise the head of Satan. And he did that through dying on the cross for your sins, the death you deserve because Jesus loves you so much. He conquered death and has the victory, and he wants to give that victory to you over sin and the devil. And this free gift of God and eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord is made possible through Jesus alone, Jesus only. Jesus is the way. Jesus came to be with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And he came to save us, to save you from your sin, to save you from hell. Again, he Ilani read John 3, 16 and 17. It says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to give himself completely to you. He already did. He wants to enter into your life to save you. He came to save. He lived to die because he loves you. And if you believe in him, you will have eternal life in heaven instead of perishing or eternal death in hell. So 87% of Americans believe in God, yeah? Only 56% 56, 56 believe Jesus is God. And that matters because Romans 10, 9 takes it a step further. It says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You must believe Jesus is God if you want to be saved. And you must believe in what Jesus did for you, coming as sweet baby Jesus in the manger, living the perfect life, dying on the cross for your sins, and rising again. That's what Jesus did for you, so you may have new life if you surrender your life to him. Key words, what he did for you. You don't go to heaven by being a good person, because you're not. Only Jesus was good enough. But through accepting what Jesus has done for you on the cross, you are good enough in God's eyes, and you deserve heaven. Because of what Jesus has done for you. And tonight we celebrate how Jesus came down from heaven, 100% God, 100% man. And Jesus made the way through the manger. The prophecy of Isaiah 9, 6 says, For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. We do not earn our salvation. Our salvation is given to us through Jesus, made possible only through him. There is no Easter without Christmas. And Jesus lived a human life. In Hebrews 4, it says Jesus was tempted in all the same ways you were. So like, think about that. Imagine Jesus being tempted to like lust at a woman, or Jesus tempted to hate his disciples. He was tempted. He went through all these similar same things you have gone through in your life. But he never sinned. He was sinless. He was perfect. And because he was fully God and fully man and perfect, he is the perfect mediator between us and God the Father. And he sacrificed his life for the forgiveness of your sins. You are forgiven if you give your life to Jesus. He already has given his life 
for you. Jesus made a way for you to be saved through Christmas, through Easter, 2,000 years ago, because Jesus loves you. This is why he came to earth at Christmas time, to save sinners that he loves so much like you. And the third point, the third reason Jesus came is to be with us forever. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 continues, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. So when it says the government will rest on his shoulders, um, it's comparing it to like the important government officials at the time. They would have like tassels and like sashes over their shoulders to show like their ranking and their accomplishments. I don't know about you guys, like in high school graduation, I had like a red cord because I donated blood once. So I had like a red cord over my graduation gown. Did anyone get some for being like high GPA or anything? My license, I'm an organ donor. Organ donor on your license. Similar thing to like wearing it over your shoulders. You are an organ donor. Good example. Not that uh, Jesus has the government resting on his shoulders because he is the ultimate authority of the world, of the church, and of your life. If you accept it or not, he is our king. And our king Jesus is not just a king who rules over us and like tells us what to do. Our king Jesus loves you and cares about you and wants to have a personal, loving relationship with you. He is our wonderful counselor. He's our mighty God. He's our eternal father. He's our prince of peace. Jesus cares about you. Amen. He's our counselor because he is fully man. He can empathize with you. He knows what it's like to be human. He can relate. Um, through all the ups and downs of life, he is there for you. He's always um, with you in the middle of it. When you feel like no one else is there, he is always with you. And he will help you thrive, not just survive. Jesus is your mighty God. He is bigger and stronger than anything you think of. He's bigger than you think he is, and he loves to work outside of what you think is possible. He is on your side. And Jesus is God, and God is our eternal Father. He is the perfect Father. He always loves you. He always cares for you. He's always there with you. And I don't know what you think about your earthly father, if you had a good dad or not, but Jesus is the best dad. He's always there with all of us. And Jesus is your Prince of Peace. He brings peace between God the Father and us. Through faith in Jesus, we are made right with God. And there will be no end to this peace. There is never-ending peace. No end to this peace. And there will be no end to the increase of his government. And in America right now, we may think the future of our government may be in question. It's a big confusion. This is like a very confusing, confusing election, maybe the biggest election of our lifetime, they say. We're in a once-in-a-century pandemic. What is going on? What do we know for sure? Well, we know that nothing will stop God. Nothing will stop God's rule. Nothing will stop God's peace. And God rules forever. And God is with us right now. Amen. This prophecy is being fulfilled right now because God is with us. He is giving you peace through everything going on, because you trust in him. If you've accepted Jesus as your savior, you have hope every single day you wake up, because you know where you're going and you know why you're here. You have a purpose to your life. Because Jesus is your wonderful counselor, your mighty God, your eternal father, and your prince of peace. Even though Jesus left us here on earth about 2,000 years ago, he left us with his Holy Spirit. And if you have Jesus, as your savior, you've surrendered your life to him, God lives inside of you. The almighty God lives inside of you. And the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. Jesus loves you. Jesus is with you wherever you go, whatever you're going through. And this connection lasts forever. Jesus came to be with us forever. And in conclusion, Luke 2, 6 and 7 says, 
While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there is no room for them in the inn. Cute. We know the story, yeah? But what does this actually mean? 92% of Americans believe this actually happened. 87% of Americans believe in God. Even the demons believe in God. They're not going to heaven. 56% of Americans believe Jesus is God. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Jesus is God. Let's take it a step further. Do you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? And do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? If so, you will be saved. You'll be going to heaven when you die, and you'll have heaven in your hearts right now. God with you through the Holy Spirit right now. If you believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross for your sins, um, if you believe in what Jesus has done for you, that means you have to admit that you're a sinner and admit that you need Jesus. Is this you? If you believe Jesus is God, and if you believe Jesus did all these things, you must admit that you need him, if you actually believe it's true. Will you own up to your sin right now? Will you admit your mistakes, repent, turn from your sin, and ask for forgiveness from the God who loves you? Will you bow at the feet of Jesus tonight? You can ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, and you are washed clean, as white as snow. God is with us right now, and God wants to come into your life right now. Will you let him? Jesus came to earth as a baby, born in a stable, laid in a manger, humble beginnings, humble entire life. He lived it, he died a horrible death, taking the punishment for your sins that you deserved so you may live forever in heaven instead of hell. He came back to life. He raised from the dead, conquered death because he loves you. He made a way for you to live forever with never ending peace, never ending love connected with God the Father. And this peace can rule in your heart starting right now. Not everyone goes to heaven. Only those who have surrendered their life to Jesus go to heaven. And tonight we have these awesome Christmas lights PD put up. We're singing, uh, oh, and Jason, and Ick, and Mackenzie, and the whole gang. We have Christmas carols by the worship team. Awesome Christmas carols, we love Christmas carols. We have Christmas goodies back there you can grab afterwards that Kyle and Marley put together. But the reason we are here tonight is for this moment right now. Do you want to surrender your life to Jesus? Do you realize you are a sinner? Like, are you a sinner? Yep. We, we all are sinners. Okay, step one. Do you realize you need a savior? Yep. Do you realize Jesus is that savior? Yep. All the prophecies Steve talks about in his book prove Jesus is our savior. The Bible proves it. And Jesus wants to enter into your life right now, and he wants to stay with you forever. You can always count on him to always love you, to always care for you, and to have a very never-ending peace in your life. What's holding you back? I mean, this is why we do what we do, is to show how much Jesus loves you. And I'm saying this because I love you, and I want you to go to heaven with me, and I want you to experience your life to the fullest while you're here on earth. Oh, you have a purpose to your life, and it's to love Jesus and to love other people and to help other people grow in their faith. And I'm just so happy living my life with Jesus, and I want you to know him too. And if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you can pray this simple prayer with, repeat it after me right now, and accept Jesus into your life. And if you've already had Jesus as your savior, you can pray this prayer again, if you'd like to, if you just realize how much you need him every single day. 
So you, we can all close our eyes if you'd like to. Jesus came for a purpose. He came for a purpose. <laughs> to save you. And you guys can repeat this prayer after me if you'd like to accept Jesus into your life. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I need you. I am not good enough on my own. I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. You are my savior. Thank you for loving me for giving me peace, for always being with me. I love you, Jesus. Amen.